Dr. Gul uh, Muhammad Khan is a professor and a director at the Center for Intelligent Systems and Network Research, CISNR, and the National Center for AI, NCAI, and a tenured TTS professor at the Electrical Engineering Department in UET Peshawar. He has a PhD in Intelligent Systems from the University of York in the UK, and he's a pioneer in Cartesian Genetic Programming Evolved uh, Development Network, CGPDNG, fifth generation AI systems. He has introduced the concept of photo billing in the energy sector in Pakistan to cater to the under slash over billing anomalies and provide an efficient transparent mechanism for meter uh, meter metering data collection. He's introduced electro-pure meterless smart metering concept to provide low-cost smart metering in developing countries for efficient low-carbon smart metering and reduction of administrative, technical, and commercial losses with the ability of theft control. He has contributed to the eight SDGs during his career, including climate change, energy, water, sustainable cities, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, and quality education. In the last two decades, he has obtained research funding for more than 2.5 billion rupees, completed 21 research projects, and five are in progress. And his major interest is, of course, the idea where worlds and trends of artificial knowledge, rather than understanding the core value of things in our existence, and where AI fits into that, which is mixed in every part of our life, including religion. For the understanding and the way the media presented it and everybody selling, including myself, uh, I mean, we are ultimately looking forward that we establish AI and then we expect the AI systems to build another AI. And ultimately, uh, we at some stage, we were expecting that it might produce a monster that will end over human society. So let me just walk through it that is it really the case where we are in the AI actually and what is the actual illusion about it. Also, some of the researchers might think that they have explanation of what it's doing and they understand uh, the path towards it. Uh, but let's see how much of that is true. So, uh, well, uh, the, the very first thing uh, that's over worry that is AI going to replace us? And the thing is that uh, before we, we, we even ask that question, the first thing is that do we even know where the AI came from and where you, we, we think it's happening? And what was the fundamental reason that uh, the AI was fundamentally introduced? So, I mean, so far, uh, as for my understanding, and I mean, since you mentioned that we have explored it in a number of areas, uh, even in some of the areas, we might uh, we, we actually didn't need AI, but we had to label it uh, with AI. Uh, we have to incorporate some of the features of it. Also, we could have done it much better without AI. But the fundings and all other ingredients were there, so we had to uh, kind of prove that this is AI. So the illusion of intelligence to the things that's what make it sellable, and that's what we are trying to do over the years. Although we expect from AI to someday to have feelings and start complaining of all the labor that we are using it for, but let's see how true is that. Okay, if we go back a little bit about the, the, the history, uh, I mean, the, the media was pitching. If you remember, you guys, uh, there was a mechanical Turk which was being pitched as a best uh, chess system produced uh, like by some kind of uh, innovative machine. But ultimately, uh, I mean, over the history, we found out that it was actually a human being inside a chess master, which was manipulating all the moves. So, uh, I mean, the, the way it was presenting was different. Uh, lately, even in 2016, the interesting case was uh, the Amazon just walk out case, uh, which was presented as AI. But the good thing is that they were not explicitly uh, mentioning that AI stands for artificial intelligence. It was actually Indian, some of some Indian labor working in India, and they were kind of watching all those cameras ensuring. Yes, these days, in modern days, we have AI which can learn from those steps and we can incorporate them in, into the system ultimately. But initially, that's how it was done. And some of the things that we are doing right now are also being human oriented, and we expect the AI to learn from it. Why uh, we are uh, like uh, doing the brainwashing through AI a lot? It's because, I mean, the whole world is kind of 
putting a lot of money into it. It's grants, everything, everybody. If you just aid the label AI, it's itself better. So yes, artificial intelligence, it's, it, it is whether it is or not, but we try to aid it to our systems as we can. Now, the thing is, uh, over the history, we probably have seen different bubbles, starting from the dot-com bubbles back in 1990s. Everybody was putting all the money into it. Uh, same was the case with the Bitcoins. AI is at uh, early stage, but it is heading towards that. We have seen a number of bubbles over the history, and everybody was kind of putting the money into it. If you guys remember, IT was there, and everybody was putting money in the IT bake in uh, millennium 2000 onwards for quite some time. Yes, AI is still doing well, but the way it was pitched was slightly different. Same is the case with AI. And uh, just like I mentioned that when uh, the digitization and IRT in information technology IT was introduced, uh, everybody was worried that they were going to lose the job. And, they, and, and it was true somehow, but uh, later on, they realized that they were actually the aid on tools. They actually transformed the way we were supposed to be doing our work. And you know, the good part about AI, it is uh, making uh, human labor less and less. That means it's uh, the, 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 the actual thing is job displacement rather than job replacement. It is putting us where we actually should be belong because we are human with brain and we that's where the ai is going to have trouble and that's where we need to start utilizing it so ai is actually kind of reminding us that we are human we are way more intelligent and we are not supposed to be working the basic labor so thanks to AI, they are going to be doing that at some stage although right now it is being highlighted as being way more intelligent than the human intelligence where are we right now? Uh, way, AI started way back in 1950s and in some of the like history take it even be in 18th centuries as well. But right now we are at the uh, generative AI and we're looking forward for the developmental at some stage as well. But we are it's already facilitating uh, looking at the uh, generative AI producing uh, chat GBT and all these other modern system providing and helping the students helping the organization solving the problems that uh, usually take a lot of time otherwise uh, wh well if you can see uh, the the major rise happens uh, after like uh, 2010 onward and the reason was the inexpensive computing and data data is the fundamental thing for the ai any kind of ai and when the computation become less expensive it was pretty easy for uh, different industries, different institutions to start utilizing it. And that's why it looked like uh, a blast right now. We have also explored it in the health sector uh, for early disease de detection, uh, for arrhythmia, heart, heart diseases, for the breast cancer, and other different type of cancers as well. We have explored it for, in social sciences, in cloud computing, in ICT infrastructure, in power energy, even for the automatic circuit designing, we have used it for the financial market forecasting business decision. We even use it for disaster management. Uh, earlier, uh, when uh, it's, it's early stage, when the computation was still uh, pretty expensive, uh, and that's when it actually started uh, revolutionizing because uh, when we explored the gen genetic programming for the automatic circuit design, it managed to reinvent the previous patented invention within hours. Uh, it was years of work and they transformed that into hours starting from the random uh, circuitry. Uh, I mean, Pentagon and the even the MI6, MI5, they, they have explored it for uh, Top Gun strategies. They have explored it for the NASA, explored it for the best optimum design of antenna. Uh, it was for the SET-5 mission. Uh, it was not possible otherwise. Uh, uh, this is one of the best invention of the artificial intelligence at the early stage. Uh, we have recently explored it for the safe city. We implemented it in one of the cities, Mardan, but the government is implementing in Islamabad, Peshawar, Sindh, and other areas. And it's been out there internationally as well. So any kind of behavior you want to detect, it's out there for the A to catch on. Uh, we have also implemented some system for the disaster management for early warning system for flood, landslide, and earthquake. 
And especially for earthquake, now we can predict the earthquake in Pakistan almost one minute ahead. That is actually for the system, not for the people to run from the building. So in case you get to know about it, so you can stop all the moving machineries and it reduce the disaster. But naturally, it is out there in the world to be explored and reduce the impact of all these disasters as well. Uh, we have also implemented it in KP, but the systems are all out there for uh, different type of traffic system, transport in other areas, even for the uh, congestions, for the traffic loading and other areas. Uh, for in, in, you know, uh, two years back, there was that incident in Murray. It was possible to take care of it if there was properly AI-based drone technology out there. So traffic congestion, road accident, any stranded cars, fire detection, those things could have been possible and information could have been shared with the central department to take some action. No, uh, well, how much we are already dependent on AI? Interestingly, Pakistan is still like at the very primary level if you're talking about Pakistan because we are not that dependent. We have only like uh, five to 10 percent digitization. And so unless and until you have IT, you cannot have uh, AI. But the world is taking it pretty seriously. Uh, I mean, they are completely dependent on that. In some of the institution, even ChatGPT is part of their syllabus. They teach them how to use it for their assignments and other problem solving. Uh, we are all stuck with the mobile phones, and we every time we have a problem, we're not trying to solve it. We ask the internet, and it, we are totally kind of dependent on it. Even like, I mean, uh, I had to look for these names, so I have to search it on Google, and Google helped me out with AI. Now. Uh, well, uh, having said that, is it uh, there is artificial intelligence and there is computational intelligence, uh, and I'll tell you the difference between them in a while. So, computational intelligence is in general that uh, you, you want a system to do everything for you, which in general for designing systems, circuits, software, hardware, and even business strategies. I think JGBT and uh, these other similar systems are providing these things, but is it intelligence? It's actually providing the best models, optimum models from the all the available uh, data they, they, they already have. So what is an intelligent system generally? Na naturally, what expectation from the intelligent system is that it does everything for us. And like, I mean, mostly it, it, it has the capability of human-like reasoning. It can recover from the failure. It can learn things and do things after the training. Once you have a train system out there, in an unknown environment, it should be able to learn and take care of itself. Now, the question is, do we have artificial intelligence systems that are capable of, uh, of that? Well, let's see, do we? Uh, where does it start from? It's uh, naturally, we expect the human to be way more intelligent because these are the only intelligent species so far we came across. And uh, the basic uh, system out there, which is deriving the intelligence is the brain. Now, uh, interestingly, humans perform the vision, motor control, and language understanding very well. So does the AI these days. And now the thing is, are we there? Because we have almost implemented this thing. If you look at the human brain, it has like uh, billions of neurons with trillion of connectivities out there. And it works a little slower uh, than any uh, silicon logic gate, but naturally, the computation power of the human brain, one single neuron is hell, it's huge. So the thing is, uh, can we ever achieve this thing? The human brain has this parallel processing, like these billion of neurons are all working in parallel at the same time. Now think of what is the deriving force? What is making us intelligent? If you look at it, like I mean, uh, all the neurons inside the brain are almost the same. So, and if you look at the brain of any other animal, the even the human brain and their animals in their structure, and some of them have even bigger brains. So where is the intelligence? Where is the brain inside the brain? Uh, if you look, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, go a little more into details and then I'll explain this, come back to this portion. So learning and memory development, how uh, is the intelligence? behavior learned and how where it's coming from so naturally if you see we are born with this portion of brain which has frontal uh, temporal uh, lobes it has other uh, portions and if you can see 
it is showing all these different uh, capabilities that uh, AI had already been able to demonstrate somehow. Now, if you can see the neuron of the human brain is on the left hand side and the most complex neuron that we came across from the artificial intelligence is on the right side. So these two are still like kind of, uh, there is a uh, thousand times differences between the two. And uh, let me share this information with you so far. We were, we are unable to demonstrate the capability of a single biological neuron. So that means we are not there yet. Now, uh, well, uh, the, the thing is the fundamentals actually come from the evolution and development. And for the evolution, uh, there was demonstration that the human uh, the DNA has some special gene which is responsible for their language development. That's why we are social animals and we can develop into uh, better societies. And if you see over the history of uh, mankind, uh, living organism, there wasn't any single evidence where the number of genes changed. That means humans were always animals. They haven't came from chimpanzees. This is what the evolution uh, actually demonstrates. Now, the two fundamental learnings for human, I mean, uh, why I'm talking about human? Because we are talking about intelligence, uh, how the artificial intelligence has to learn from the intelligence, of course, but the intelligence system, uh, where does it came from? So fundamentally, there are two things that are driving forth. One is the evolution and the other one is development. These are the only fundamental things from which the intelligence can come from. In evolution, uh, well, there is a crossover asexual and bisexual, but in both the cases, ultimately, uh, you have to have some genes from the, the parents and it transformed into the children. So that's how the learning comes from the uh, one generation to another. So that's one way the intelligence could be uh, kind of uh, transmitted from one generation to another. The second, now this is the interesting case, the, the, the development case. If you see all the animal cells are same, that's what we studied in biology, and it's still the same, there isn't any change in that science. So since all the animal cells are same, where is the difference? The fundamental difference is in the DNA, and that's what makes us human. So it, they, I mean, all the animal cells, they start from a single cell and they ultimately transform into different species. So naturally, the DNA seems to be the driving force to become a human. And then being human, you do the rest of the job during your rest of the life. But the human are born with the brain which has had all those capabilities. Now, uh, having said that, I mean, there are, uh, I realized actually there were only 15 minutes, so I couldn't go to details of all this biology and science behind it. But the question is that we are trying to explore all the computational power, try to achieve intelligence from the uh, digital circuitries, from GPUs and CPUs out there and GPUs out there. Why not try to explore the brain directly, especially in those species that we are not using it for any specific reason.